Next up is Blake Snell. ADP is 58.4 as the SP18 currently remains a free agent coming off his second Cy Young award. And some fun Cy Young stats. I always like to bring these up that I read uh, over on MLB.com after the season ended. Snell became the first AL slash NL pitcher since 1913 when earned runs became official in both leagues to lead the majors in both ERA and walks. He became the first pitcher since early win in 1959 to lead the majors in walks while winning the Cy Young. Uh, Chris, what do we do with Blake Snell? Uh, <laughs> there is probably not a pitcher in baseball who's previous start previous week previous month or previous season tells you less about what they are likely to do in the coming season like last year i remember frank you were pretty excited about blake sound a big part of it was towards the end of the season he had this incredible run and it was basically he just simplified things he just threw his fastball and slider and he was awesome his curveball and changeup weren't good pitches for him and he ditched them and was amazing Last year, he wins a Cy Young while I believe throwing his slider less than he had any season since 2020. It's mm -hmm. nothing about him makes sense. Like, there is <laughs> one thing you can be certain with, with Blake Snow he's going to get a lot of strikeouts. Other than that, like, he's had an ERA of 4.2 or worse in two of his past five seasons. He has had a whip better than 1.2 once in his past five seasons he has gone his era by year 4.29 3.24 4.20 3.38 he hasn't been within a run of his previous year okay no sorry that's not true 2020 to 2021 he was 0.96 runs removed it's just to say that he is consistently inconsistent you were we were talking about dropping him last May. He had a 5.40 ERA on May 19th. And then he went on to win the Cy Young Award. Mm, There's yeah. a decent chance that if you drafted Blake Snell last season, you got zero value out of him because you might have dropped him. And so that's mm. one to say, hey, if you draft Blake I, Snell, don't drop him when things are going poorly because he's I probably going to figure it out at some point. I don't but think his also, roster rate ever dropped below 90% for what it's worth. Okay. But yes, I mean, it, it was it was a discussion on this podcast. Do you drop? In fact, it's been a discussion the last three years yes. for Blake Snell <laughs> because even deeper into 2022 and 2021 was he struggling. And it wasn't just he had a high ERA, but when mm -hmm. he struggles, he's walking four or five guys to start. He's not even going five innings. He is utterly useless. And then last year was the first time since 2018 that he threw more than 130 innings in a season. He's only done that twice. In his so career. he, and he's won a Cy Young both times. Yeah. It's he's, yeah. he's impossible to predict my heuristic when it comes to Blake Snell has just been when the market is high on Blake Snell, sell Blake Snell. When the market is low on Blake Snell, buy Blake Snell. And that has worked out pretty well over the past five seasons or so. I faded him after the Cy Young award. He was really bad that year. So I, I'm i not saying Blake Snell will definitely be bad this season. My hunch is he will be pretty good this season, but I don't want to be the one to draft him. And I feel, I said this with Cody Bellinger during the out outfield preview, the fact that Blake Snell has not signed yet makes me mm -hmm. feel better about that position because it clearly well, the very, very smart people who run Major League Baseball teams also cannot figure out what to make of Blake Snell. Yeah, I mean, part of that is Scott Boris as his agent. And, sure. and coming off a of Cy Young season, Scott Boris probably expects him to get $350 million. So um, I, I'm part of that might be unrealistic expectations on his camp's part. Sure. Uh, so, but I did want to bring up the complication of him not signing yet. Because here, here has been my stance on Blake Snell. I think we all have him as a bust this year, right? Just because of give, given given that even in his Cy Young season, he had five walks per nine and given all the inconsistencies over his career, it's, it's, it's scary to invest in him like an ace or a very high number two. Um, but because he is so prolific with strikeouts and because I find strikeouts to be the only reliable stat in this environment, 
I still found myself drafting him, even even acknowledging all the risks and the bust potential. I still found myself drafting him just because in a lot of the the like le- expert leagues, he would slip farther mm-hmm. than than the Freddie Peraltas and Kodai Singas of the world. But spring training has begun. N- not games. They haven't started playing games yet, but but spring training, everybody's in camp, pitchers are getting ready. Blake Snell doesn't even have a team yet. So with each passing day, the likelihood of him being ready for the start of the season drops. And, you know, at at at, at some point, it's going to get to a point where there's pressure on him to ramp up quicker than maybe he should. And, and so that, that might mm-hmm. create more risks on top of the risks that already exist. So I'm very close to... I mean, who he he could sign, he could come to terms with the team any day now. And maybe by the time you're listening to it, it's a moot point, but I'm not necessarily expecting that because we haven't heard a lot of buzz lately. And uh, I'm to the point where I, I think it's probably worth fading Blake Snell just for that reason, just because he's going to be so far behind in the ramp up process when he finally does sign. It could be that, Everybody starts fading him and he drops outside yeah. the top 30 at SP and suddenly he's a value again. But but as things stand now with him being, what are we talking about? 16th, 17th? Uh 18th. 18th. Yeah. Uh I'm I'm pretty reluctant to pay that price for him. Yeah, he's 21 for me. So I I agree with that. Um I think just like one sentence outlook on Blake Snell, trade for him in May. <laughs> like if you want him on your team, like I, I, I'm being going to get lost to a slow start again. We yeah. can't actually predict when inconsistent players are going to be inconsistent and possibly just gets off to an amazing start. But like, yeah. he has fluctuated so much that there's a decent chance he's just going to be kind of cheap at some point this season. 